Okay. Okay, I'm going to take up where we left off last night a little bit. I, uh, after the, uh, I was finished, I threw in a, a, made reference to a couple other events that I'm going to start with, and then we're going to get to this uh, prophecy that is very, very significant, is that I was in the, uh, just ending with the uh, year of transition, 1996, and talked about the Benny Hinn dream that I had in 93, that I was on a platform with him, and then it's uh, some years later, now it's, it's October 96, I'm on the platform, in Toronto, uh, uh, then later on that night, Mark DuPont, who uh, I consider the uh, primary prophetic voice in the, in the uh, uh, Toronto ministry in those days, and then he called me up on the platform. He talked about, you're in a time of transition. He gave a, a few more details about it. I talked a little bit about that last night. Okay, then uh, what happens is 19, uh, uh, still in 1996, I want to give you just a little bit more of what's going on is that Paul Kane has a uh, visitation from the Lord in May or June of 1996. And in this visitation from the Lord, the Lord spoke to him the acronym IHOP. And uh, in this acronym IHOP, it, again, our IHOP did not begin uh, for, some, for uh, three, uh, three years later. But uh, he had I for intercession, H for holiness of heart, O for offering to the poor, and P for the prophetic ministry. And it says the Lord's calling us to this in a fresh way, in a new way, which are really the four uh, things the Lord spoke to me in Cairo, Egypt in 1982. That those of you that are familiar with the story, you remember that. And those that have you been here these 12 nights, you're going, oh, boy, I've got so many stories. I can't remember what that was. But, but uh, these, the idea that we had built it on night and day prayer, night and day prayer, it must be built on that. It must be built on holiness of heart which we call passion for Jesus or intimacy with God or becoming lovesick worshipers that obey the Lord, that follow the Lamb wherever He goes. It must be built on extravagant giving to the poor and it must be built on the realm of faith or the activity of the Spirit, and we could call it prophetic. So the Lord speaks us to Paul. It renews us. And then uh, a month later, we have a conference in June of 96, and Paul Cain uh, comes to the conference. He goes, I have the word of the Lord. A very uh, powerful word, uh, a sad word, a grievous word. He said, the Lord says, you have the fear of man. You have a element of the fear of man in your heart that's holding you back from the IHOP reality that I just called, the Lord just recalled us to. And I remember thinking, uh, I don't feel like I do. And a few more little pieces of divine information later, I said, oh, oh, I, I guess I really do. Ouch. And uh, we called the whole church into repentance. And I repented for the fear of man. And the fear of man was, there's many uh, facets of the fear of man, but it's a very important part of our story, that I was drawing back from the difficult, uh, uh, the burdensome nature, the social burden of this message. And I was uh, uh, focusing on subjects that were... Uh, uh, kind of dodging the elements of this IHOP message that have real teeth in it, that really cut and create uh, uh, very, very important to the Lord to take the stand on those points, but they create social dynamics that are not pleasant. And I got up and, and repented and called our leadership team, and they repented. And, and the Lord says, I want to heal you from the fear of man. And you must take a stand because the promises God has given you as a people cannot go forward except you are bold and you do not look back in these subjects. You must be bold, not only in the living of them, but the proclaiming of them, but you're never ever going to live them if you can't boldly proclaim them. And oh, that, that, that was a painful summer. Then in, on July 17, 1996, I'm in uh, a conference in Dallas and I get a phone call from Paul Cain. And he's in Pasadena and he says, I've had an angelic visitation. The Lord told him to relocate to Kansas City and told him some things about that. And we made a big deal out of it. We had a bunch of meetings and, and, and uh, really celebrated that. And then in the wake of that, he had the Bartle Hall word in 1990 and then in second installment in 1996. And the Lord spoke about the 40,000, the new uh, would be gathering uh, many times, 40,000 would be gathering in that building. And uh, there'd be a new approach to holiness there would be a, 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 a young adult movement and, and a new kind of music, a new sound, and it would go forth. And, 
and uh, he talked about the movement, and it was time to begin to talk about the movement, and and all of these things. And, and now that you're the Lord is healing you from the fear of man, you're you're never healed in one in one uh, event, and you're never fully healed of it. Don't don't think because. You, you repent and, and you have a season where the Lord convicts you. It's over with. It, it's not a done deal in my life nor your life. This is probably the great Goliath in the move of God is the fear of man. It really, really is. It's not the fear of fasting. It's not the fear of giving. It's not the fear of obeying. It's the fear of standing for what you believe at the highest level. When the Lord appears to Joshua... After Moses dies in Joshua chapter 1, it always uh, surprised me. I never could figure it out. The Lord appears to Joshua after 40 years, and he says, Joshua, be of good courage. I thought, courage? I mean, after all the miracles, what is courage? Courage is the issue when you move out of the wilderness years to go into the land. It truly is courage. And I never, I've always loved Joshua 1 8 because it talks about meditating on the word as the way to be free from the fear to have courage. When the wilderness years are over and it's time to take the land, the issue, the issue is courage. And courage comes by trembling and living in the Word of God. But then, uh, I, I, uh, actually, it's just after that is the Benny Hinn thing I talked about last night. And uh, it is the transition time, and then Mark DuPont says the transition is here, and then the accidental uh, uh, 40-day fast, meaning the idea of just saying yes to the Bill Bright invitation, and the Lord uh, moves on it, and it becomes something I didn't think it was going to be. It, it just uh, it got a hold of us in, in the grace of God and became something dynamic. It became a, a, a birth canal. A transition and a birth canal. I mentioned that last night. And uh, it's exciting that today, uh, this is a very important day, November 7th, our own uh, Wes and Carol, they had their baby. The, 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 the birth canal happened and the transition happened. And, and little Jeremiah David was born last night. And this morning, yeah, on November 7th. Yeah, November 7th no, at 9.30. This is such an important day. This is truly one of the most important days in, in our uh, history up to now in my opinion it is that's just how i see it but anyway the fasting comes and it's a time of transition and then i have this uh very powerful prophetic dream right right after that 40 days of seeking the lord uh uh it's this i mentioned it last night but i want to get it on the tape so you can hear it because it was afterwards uh this runner comes of it's a man where you can't see his face and he has a message from the lord and bob jones uh, taught me some years ago, he goes, when you have a messenger from God declaring a message from the court of God and it has authority on it and you can't see their face in dream life, that's often just a symbol of the Holy Spirit. This runner comes running in. Uh, the, I'm, I'm in the office with a couple of guys and he breaks open the door. I mean, he just sl- hits it and the door comes flying open. He has a scroll in his hand and he comes running. He says, the kingdom of God is coming to Kansas City. The kingdom of God is coming to Kansas City. And I understood it meant the power of God is going to be released in this geographic area for worldwide impact. And, and, and again, far beyond our context, because we're part of a much bigger picture in Kansas City. And Kansas City is a part of a much bigger picture, a global strategy in the Midwest as it affects the whole globe. And that was the original Bob Jones uh, 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 angelic visitation in 1975. That Kansas City had a corporate calling that went together with the Midwest and it would affect the whole globe. And so we're a part of a, a big dynamic across the city and across the entire Midwest. When you look at the global strategy, it has to do with that. And so, so this runner comes in with a scroll. And, and I know in this scroll, it's part of our invitation into this uh, vision far bigger than IHOP and far bigger than Kansas City. It has to do with the Midwest, together ministries all over the Midwest and going together in prophetic and intercession, affecting dynamically the nation of Israel. That's what the... The words were, have consistently been from day one. Uh, prophetic and intercession in a large, uh, 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 uh space, I mean, uh, far bigger than Kansas City. Again, again, the whole Midwest affecting world revival and affecting uh, the nation of Israel. And so anyway, this runner comes in with the scroll, says, the kingdom of God is coming to Kansas City. Are you ready? And what he was saying, are you ready to take your part of the scroll? Are you ready to say yes to this? And I remember, uh, there's a couple things I'm not adding into it because, uh, 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 just for time's sake, but, uh, and I look at this runner and I'm just staring at this runner. I don't answer yes or no. I'm just staring. And then 
The dream's over, and then, wow, what a powerful dream. The dream I have at the second time. The runner breaks in with a scroll, offers the scroll, and, and, and the idea is I'm supposed to take it, but I didn't take it. And uh, are you ready? The kingdom of God is coming to Kansas City, which meant a manifestation of power, which meant a historic visitation that will touch the whole city, and it will go across the ends of the earth. And, and again, I stare and say nothing, and it happens a third time, exactly the same thing. Are you ready? I never answer. Then six months later, six months later, November 1997, and it's the beginning of the new season that was birthed through that intense time of seeking the Lord. Uh, John Kilpatrick uh, from Pensacola comes and he uh, speaks to me in this dream. And, and he says, are you ready? It's the same question. And, he, and at the first time he asks, are you ready? I actually say, I answer it. At least I, my silence is broken. And of course, in dreams, you can't make it happen. But the Lord's really showing you other dynamics in dream language. And I say, no. And well, there you have it, you know. <laughs> and, and it was true. It was really true. And then he asked me again. Some things happened in a dream. And then I say, yes. And the yes, I believe, is right now. I believe this November 7th, the end of this uh, 50 days of seeking the Lord is really critical. The other key event that happened in 1997 was on May 7th, 1997, the 14-year anniversary from the May 7th, 1983, a solemn assembly in the comet. Is, uh, I don't want to go into it a, a great deal, but I'm in Assisi, Italy, where uh, St. Francis in his uh, the monastery named after him in the hometown that he is that, and the Lord begins to uh, stir me and touch me, and I go to bed, and I wake up, and, and uh, uh, I stay up all night. But I'm up all night, and the only thing happening is uh, in that whole Italian monastery in Assisi, uh, Assisi uh, uh, Italy, is uh, this one book in English. They have like 100 books in Italian. So uh, there's one in English. It's his life story. So I read the whole thing all night. And the Lord begins to speak to me, and he spoke to me in a very powerful way. I don't want to go through the story now. And he said, friends of the bridegroom. The first time I ever thought of that, I knew the verse. I'd preached on it uh, in passing a time or two, but never was that an important verse to me ever. And the Lord spoke so clearly, friends of the bridegroom. And, uh, and I looked at my Bible where, you know, I, I knew that verse. I wasn't 100% sure what it was fully about. I, I knew it was important, and, and I found out it was John the Baptist, John three twenty nine. Of course, I've lived in it since then, and so have many of you. And I believe that the scroll that the Lord wants to give us, the scroll, I'm adding this part, would have written on it, friends of the bridegroom. That's our contribution to the big picture of what's going on. Okay, so then uh, 1997 is over, 1999. Uh, the Lord says it's the time to release IHOP. We began it in May, uh, uh, May 7th, right, May 7th, 1999, and then uh, that was 13 hours a day, and then the full time on September 19th, okay. So 99 goes by in the three years, and here it is, September 19th. It's September 19th, we've just, we're having our third year anniversary, and, and uh, uh, it's, hey, three years, here we are, and that night, I'm together with my, with, uh, our family, we're at the, at the uh, theater place, you know, and they're, we're watching the uh, play uh, 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 Les Miserables. I'm there, and uh, the Lord begins. It's, it's, you know, it's maybe the fourth or fifth time this has happened. This wind and fire thing happens that I've talked about several times in this testimony for 12 days, and it happens again. And uh, every time that happens, something's up. And, and, I, and I just think, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, Deborah Perkins had many, many prophetic dreams. And she says, uh, it's the time, the transition. It's time, we're at the third year coming up. It's transition. I know it from the Lord. We're supposed to go on a long fast. And I remember my famous last words. This is on Monday and before Wednesday at, 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 at the family deal. Uh, on Monday, I said, not, I said, not a chance. I said, I'm so weary right now, I couldn't think of going on a fast. And she goes, well, I'm just, I'm telling you, it's the transition time, and it is the Lord, and I think we're going on it. I've had a number of dreams, we're going on it, and, and I said, great, uh, not me, I'm not, you know, maybe next year, after we get in the building, you know, talk to me then, and we'll see. She goes, well, we'll see. So I'm at that, it's two, three days later, now it's, uh, September 18th and uh, Wednesday night, and I'm at this thing, and all of a sudden this wind and fire thing. Again, I've only had this, you know, five, six, seven, you know, four or five times, whatever, in 30 years, and, and it happens. And I've got my head uh, in my hands, leaning over. My head is in my hands, you know, t 
10, 20, 30 minutes. My wife says, hey, are, are you okay? And I said, yes. And she, she goes, oh, okay, something's going on. I said, yeah, something's going on. I don't know what's to make sense of it. And I see this real clear vision. And I'm not one given to visions. I see this banner uh, September 19th to November 7th, which, of course, is today. It's just so clear in my mind, and I hear the Lord speak, Jubilee, I'm going to release the promises. Jubilee, I'm going to release the promises. And, uh, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, okay, and I don't even want to count the days up. And I'm the Lord's on me. I get up and go walk around, and my family goes, you know, uh, oh, boy, you know, what's he doing now? And I'm, and I'm, just, I'm just under this thing. The whole, I missed the whole deal. I'm walking back and forth the whole time at the very back, just pacing. And, oh, it's happening. Just download, download, download. And it's just the Lord saying, it's now the time. It's the Jubilee. It's the Jubilee. And I'm gripped. And I know something's going on. And I, got, I went home and, and uh, uh, sat down. And I said, if this is 50 days, it can't be. Because I, I didn't even want to count at the, at the uh, place. But I get the calendar in at 48, 49, 50, November 7th. I go, oh, no, 50 days. So the next day, got the leadership together, and they all said, yes, yes, yes. What, what was the number? We had 8, 10, 15 dreams. Everybody was hearing this. 40-day fast, 50-day fast, loan fast, start now, start now, so we're on it. We're, we're, we're going for it. The real highlight to me of the whole 50 days was on the 47th day. And it was just uh, Monday is what I call our dedication service at the 10 a.m. prayer meeting, the uh, two-hour prayer meeting. And what happened, I'm going to read here from Isaiah chapter 66. I read this verse, or I, I just uh, spoke it out loud. It says, but on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word, who trembles at my word, Isaiah 66 two. And so I uh, begin to lead in prayer and and uh, we begin to have a just a, a corporate dedication, and it went nearly the entire two hours just on this idea here, on the idea of uh, uh, bowing down before the Lord and trembling at His word, and and so uh, I'm calling the people to that now. If I if somebody said what does it mean to tremble for His word, I w- if I had one f- verse I would have to use, it would be Philippians three thirteen, when Paul says this, and it may not even at first strike you when Paul says this one thing I do, I forget what lies behind. That, to me, at the end of the day, is what it means to tremble at his word. And what I mean by that is that when we tremble at his word, we forget our, our dedication. We don't, we, don't our, I mean, we don't negotiate with God on the basis of how dedicated we are. We forget it. And we forget our weakness and our failure as well. And we esteem his word over us. We esteem his dedication, and even this, we esteem his weakness. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Though he was rich, he became poor for us. He became weak for us, it says in, in Corinthians as well. He became poor and he became weak that we might become rich. And what happens in the trembling at his word, what we do is we take God at face value at his word and we don't, uh, we tremble before his word and we say, your riches and your dedication mean way more to us than us, uh, than ours. And even our weakness, as horrible as it is, we're going to keep believing you because your weakness when you became sin was far superior. And we esteem, what we do, we really do is that we say yes, what Mary said when the angel visited, be it done to me according to your word. That's what it means to tremble his word. And we don't rise up and say, well, I, you know, I deserve this. No, we esteem what he did. And we don't say, well, you know, maybe in a year or two when I get around to, you know, kind of evening the score. No, we just push delete on both sides and we tremble. If God said it, it is final. We're going forward with it. And, and so I was calling us to tremble at his word. And, uh, and to, uh, bow down before the Lord. And then, and then a very, very significant thing that, that, uh, takes place is that Deborah Perkins comes walking up, uh, and, uh, takes the microphone. And, uh, she said, I had a dream May, uh, 4th, uh, uh, this is November 4th, May 4th, 18 months ago, 2001. And she said, this is, uh, this is happening. It's happening right in front of our eyes. And I just had her share it for a moment. She goes, it is right now happening. And I said, okay. And I said, tell us the dream. And she uh, has it all written down and has had it. And a f- few of her friends have looked over. And so in this dream, what's happening is that, uh, is that we're on a long fast in this dream. This is 18 months ago. The, a bunch of us are on a long fast. And, and I stand up in the dream and I say, we have to be a people who tremble. 
We have to be a people who tremble. And I was talking to the IHOP family and and then I said, uh, we have to be a people who bow before the Lord. The very things I just said. So she comes up and says, Mike, this is, this is 18 months ago. This happened in, in, in the dream. And uh, she said, and then in the dream you read Isaiah 66 verse 2, what you just read. But anyway, in the middle of this dream, uh, I stand up uh, in the dream. This is, again, 18 months ago. I said, I don't ask a lot of this team, but this is what I insist on. That we tremble at his word and we bow down before the word of God. And uh, that's what I said 18 months ago. And she noticed in the dream 18 months ago, there was a weight of God on me, a seriousness on me. And, and then I started prophesying back in May 2001 in her dream. And, she, and I said, there's going to be an IHOP in the north. There's going to be one in the south, one in the east, one in the west. Of course, you're going to see in a minute. That's uh, in this blueprint prophecy we're going to go through in a minute. I started prophesying uh, elements from that. And then I said this in the dream 18 months ago. Uh, the blueprint prophecy begins now. And the blueprint prophecy, what we're going to look at in just a moment, we're going to look at it briefly because uh, there's mystery dimensions to it. I don't grasp. And, and you'll ha- it's all written down, so you don't have to, uh, uh, we don't have to cover it all or try to uh, uh, cover everything tonight, but you have it. And, uh, and she says, and afterwards we talk, she goes, do you understand what has just happened? She says, 18 months ago, I saw this. You read Isaiah 66, verse 2. You called us to tremble. You called us to bow. The weight of God was on you. You said that's the most important thing that we do. You said we're going to have IHOPs in the north, south, east, and west. You said that the blueprint prophecy begins. And, of course, what strikes my mind is jubilee. Jubilee. That's what the Lord told me. November, September, September 19th to November 7th. Jubilee. And so uh, I've been waiting for this confirmation because as we look at this, Prophecy I received 18 years ago, 18 years ago. Uh, It says, the very first line of it, it says, do not begin till God confirms it. And I believe that the beginning of it, uh, to begin it in an overt way, is like I said earlier, you're never going to stand true to something you don't proclaim. You must proclaim what you're going to stand true to. Or if you keep it secret... And stand true to it, you waver under pressure. That's why it says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Because when you say it, you are accountable, you're on record, it looses angels, demons, and it looses the hearts of people for you and against you. Many dynamics happen when it is said. And the word of your testimony isn't just how you met the Lord. It, the word of your testimony is the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. You enter into his testimony, what's burning on his heart, even related to your little life. You stand with agreement on what God said. And 18 years ago, I received this word, and it was confirmed in the most astounding, astounding way, which I'm going to give you just a little bit on that because it has to do with, with all of us and it has to do with much more than IHOP. I mean, the word is bigger than our ministry. The, it's like everything. When any servant of God obeys and a whole group of people press in together, the water level goes up for everybody. Every church, every ministry in the Midwest and Kansas City that's saying yes, everyone, all the body of Christ is getting the, a higher water level. It's just how it works. It's just, it's just the way God has joined us together in the body of Christ. Okay, so uh, in this blueprint prophecy, I want to say this, the most, uh, because I've shared now 12 nights of uh, prophetic testimonies, and of course people are asking me, well, which is your favorite? Well, favorite, I, that's a funny word. I don't know how to answer favorite. Uh, I know the one that, that is the most powerful, and that's probably what it means. It would be the August 1984, the one about the chariot, the one where I had the personal experience, unquestionably. That is the most powerful word experience I've ever received ever in my life. And then some would say, okay, apart from that one, how about from a person? And I would have to, uh, unquestionably, the one that you have in your hands is the most significant word ever given for us corporately. There's nothing to me that has a greater scope of understanding and a greater scope of impact of implication i mean than this word and the lord confirmed it in a very very powerful way he confirmed it in a way that was proportionate to its meaning to us if it's the most significant word and we've had all these other testimonies through the years you would think god would confirm this one at a pretty significant level and he did 
Now that, this is the most significant word I've ever received for us corporately. The most significant word I've ever received individually, as an individual I've never shared it publicly, would have been from Paul Kane. He gave it to me on September, I mean on January 1st, 1990. It had to do with Zechariah chapter 4. And I just want to say it for the record because I referenced Zechariah 4, the most astounding, powerful, personal word I've ever received uh, from a prophet, the only thing more powerful would have been the, the uh, visitation in, in August 84 that I talked about with the chariot and the apostolic ministries coming forth. But Paul Cain told me something. I've never shared it publicly. I don't think I ever will. I've only shared it one time, actually, to any uh, to a group of people. at Matt Candler's house with a, some of the, uh, about 10 of them were there. And because uh, something really powerful happened with Zechariah 4, and I told them, and, uh, but uh, I talk about Zechariah 4 a lot. It's shown up five different times in 20 years in the most uh, clear way. I've, I mentioned Joel chapter 2 was very, very important to us. Joel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 9. And uh, I want to add to that Zechariah 4, though the stories, I don't think uh, uh, most of those five stories will ever be told. But Zechariah chapter 4 is a real big one. It's the one not by power, not by might. It's really about building the house of prayer, but it shows up five times in 20 years in a ways that are beyond uh, just, you know, somebody said, hey, I'm supposed to give you this word. It was a very alarming, alerting, and powerful ways. Okay, so now we're turning to the blueprint prophecy. We're going to the last page, which is uh, the background. I want to give a little bit of the background. It's the green page at the, on page five because the prophecy is, uh, is four pages, but at the very back, we have the background. I want to just kind of go through this uh, pretty uh, quick, the background, and uh, then we're going to just go through part of, of the four pages. And again, it's, it's not like today it all happens. It's not, it's the, we've known we're in a transition. The Lord told me at the first of this 50 days, jubilee, jubilee. This is a jubilee fast. Deborah Perkins had the Isaiah 66 dream back in May uh, uh, 2001, 18 months ago, that when we have the long fast and you do Isaiah 66 and the people tremble and they bow down, uh, uh, it's the hour to go on the line and to share the blueprint prophecy. And the minute she shared it, it was like, wow, it took my breath away as I was remembering it. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, wow. And this is the hour. This is the hour. Uh, for it to begin, but it's not, I've never, again, I've never shared this publicly and, and it's, it does not begin until you go on the line. And for 18 years, I've held this uh, mostly, uh, al- almost with very little exceptions, almost entirely private. It started on, ma- on, uh, number one, Friday, uh, March 23rd, 1984. Bob Jones, the Friday afternoon, he comes, he says, I've heard the audible voice of the Lord. The Lord's going to give you blueprints Monday. Remember, 83 and 84, I told you when the most intensive prophetic things are happening, it was the time of promise, the years of the prophetic. He says, Monday, I heard it audibly from the Lord. You know, and, and again, so much was happening, and I was thinking, uh, because this is, uh, the next week is the Noel Alexander, the Major General Alexander, and the, he saw the, the, the uh, lilies and the, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the millions of flowers in the intercession. That happens one week later. That happens one week later. And uh, uh, another week or two after that is the April 84 uh, 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 Joseph's Dungeon. In 10 years, it begins with wine. That was just a week or two after this word. The, uh, then another month or two or three after that is the, uh, is the Bob Jones July 3rd, 84, where uh, the Lord calls him Mephibosheth, and he sees the healing procession to Arrowhead Stadium and the release of apostles in the city, etc. And then the next month, August 84, is my uh, most uh, powerful experience I've ever had in the Lord, where I had the heavenly experience with the Lord, Second Corinthians 12, whether in the body or out. Paul said, I do not know, but I know this. I stood before the Lord in the third heavens, and the Lord spoke to me about this movement in August. And then September, I mean, March was intense. But so, I mean, uh, 84 was intense, but so was 83. And then it began to lift after that. And then September, right after that, the next month, is uh, when the Lord confirms this. And I'm going to tell you that story in just a moment. But uh, he comes and he says, uh, number one here, on Friday, he goes, on Monday, it's coming. Monday, it's coming. 
And I said, well, what's the blueprints? He goes, I don't know. I heard it audibly. He said, the Lord spoke to me. I heard it out loud. The blueprints are coming Monday. You have to know it. Then, then this is Friday, Saturday. He says, it's coming Monday. I see him at church Sunday. He goes, Mike, you have to take this serious. Monday are divine blueprints. Okay, Bob, I'm in. Do, do I look, uh, yeah, you do, and I don't know, and, uh, and I said, okay, and I remember the energy he had about this, okay, Monday comes, March 26th, a, a prophetic man, unknown to, to our team, he dry, he's at four hours out in rural Kansas somewhere, the Spirit of God came on him, and he writes down this uh, prophecy, and uh, he, 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 he uh, drives four hours, he doesn't call, no one's there, he leaves it in a big uh, envelope on my desk. It says, confidential, Mike Bigel's eyes only. And I, I think, well, what's this, you know? I get uh, back later on that afternoon, maybe about 4 o'clock, and, and uh, I guess sometime like that late afternoon, and Bob Jones, and, and I open it, and it's this prophecy, and it says in the cover letters, in the cover letter, it says, the Spirit of God fell on me, this, this, this. The Lord told me this was the blueprints for your whole movement. And I go, man, that's interesting. Today's Monday, blueprints, and I and so uh, Bob calls up and he goes, did you get it? And I said, well, uh, yeah, yeah. I said, it's a prophecy. It says, it says these are blueprints. He goes, well, that's it. And again, I'm just not 100% sure, though I really believe in him. You, you just never know, you know. You just, you can't be too careful. You know why? Because you're giving your heart to it. And when you give your heart to it, you can't play Russian roulette, prophetic Russian roulette, when you give your heart to it. And I see, I've seen people do that for 20 years. They just play this game and people are getting injured and hurt. And I don't like that. And I don't really don't like it when it happens to me. And so I, I, I said, well, we'll see. We'll see. And so Bob, I said, he says, you, you don't really believe it. I said, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the spirit of faith, I have a spirit of faith around it, sort of. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a cool word, you know. So it's a little grandiose, but other than that, you know, uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it says it says a lot of things that I believe. It says house of prayer, because you don't remember a year ago at the solemn assembly, the Lord said house of prayer. I know the guy could have been at the meeting. I mean, he could have been there. You know, it says Joseph Company, but I, we've said it one or two sermons, Joseph Company. Could have got Joseph Company. I said uh, it could have been, you know, the five or six other things. It said bride. I said, I don't know anything about that yet. And it was some years later. I said, I don't get the bride thing, but... It said forerunner, it said John the Baptist, it said a lot of those things that I, I didn't relate to yet at that time, and I said, well, you know, whatever. And uh, I, I just kind of said, whatever, you know, if it's God, it will take care of itself. It's not the kind of thing that you're going to make happen. You're not going to make this prophecy happen, I guarantee you that. So it's not a matter of convincing people, that's one reason... And, and I felt there was a lot more damage telling it than not telling it because people would get defiled in their spirit. It's called pride, but their spirit gets defiled. And then uh, it just gets real goofy and out, and out, of, out of sorts. So I said, no, nah, I'm not telling it. And the Lord said in it that it don't go forward till God confirms it. And I believe that Deborah Perkins' dream that she had 18 months ago and uh, that we're on a long fast. I say Isaiah 66 trembled his word. I say the IHOPs are going to go north, south, east, and west. And I say that uh, this, uh, it's time for the blueprint prophecy. And, uh, and I do the Isaiah 66 too without any concept of that dream. I'm, and so, uh, and I'm already determined the IHOPs are going to go north, south, east, and west. That's something that I haven't told the staff. I'm real clear about that. But it's not north, south, east, and west per se just in the city. It's north, south, east, and west throughout the Midwest. And the Lord has really spoken to me. I just haven't shared the vision yet. And so when she came and told me just that just the other day, I just said, I got something about that actually with a lot of energy. This is about the Midwest and going hard after it. And, uh, and so it's far, far uh, beyond just Kansas City, uh, 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 what we're talking about here. So the next event is uh, number three here on September 13th, 1984. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this is, has to be the strangest encounter I've ever had in the Lord. If, uh, if the uh, uh, heavenly experience was the most exhilarating, this was absolutely the strangest encounter I've ever had in my life. And I don't want to try to tell you all the details, but I want to tell you a little bit because I want to tell you a little bit of it. And one of the reasons I want to tell you, not just to entertain you, not just because it's curious, because these are things God does in the Holy Spirit. I've only shared this one time in, in 18 years, the, the story. And, and, uh, it, but it's too complicated to go through the details. 
And uh, in another setting, I'll give details, but, but here I just want to say this. I'll give just some real uh, uh, broad strokes uh, to it. Uh, myself and Bob and Augustine and a few others, we go to a meeting in September, a couple days before the 13th, uh, to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we're at this meeting, and it's a Sunday morning. It's about maybe a 1,000 people. It's in a big gymnasium. And uh, uh, Augustine is on one side of the stage, and me and Bob Jones are completely on the other side. I mean, it's a really large auditorium, and, and uh, what happens is that Bob Jones is, Augustine's prophesying to people, and Bob Jones whispers in my ear on the other side. He goes, you see the lady in the red dress? The Spirit of God's on her. He goes, you see it? And I go, well, I see the red dress. I don't see the Holy Spirit on her. I go, I don't really do that, but... Uh, uh, he says the spirit of God's resting on her. So I'm way over here at the, at the, uh, at this side of the stage and, and Augustine's over there and he's prophesying and going for it and the Lord's on him and me and Bob are just kind of watching. And then the next person Bob, uh, Augustine calls out is that lady in the red dress. So I'm alerted. I said, Bob, how did that just happen? How did he know out of a thousand people that he goes, well, it's obvious the Lord's all over. And I said, well, I don't see anything but the red dress. <laughs> and Augustine called her out and that was my first, I was alerted. Because I'm the only one that watched that happen. And I said, huh, interesting. And so uh, Augustine has her come forward. She's about uh, maybe uh, 70s, could be 80s. I mean, she probably 80s. I, uh, I don't know. And uh, 90 pounds, under five foot, just a little old thing. And uh, she, I mean, she's just the cutest little thing. And, and Augustine says, mother, would you mind coming down forward? And she has a... Uh, a real bad hip, and she had a real serious disease, and she, you know she's struggling. And people are like, "Augustine, give her a break. Just give her the word." I mean, my goodness, what are you doing? You know, I'm kicking in my pastoral mode here. Augustine, give her a break. You know, she can't get down here. He says, "No, the Lord wants her down here." I go, "I doubt it." I mean, inside, and uh, but he does. He does. I mean, it takes her forever to get down there because she, she's got her hip is just real bad and she everyone's helping her and i'm thinking augustine just stop it tell her to sit down and give her the word let's go to her he goes no tell her to come down here so she comes down here and he says mother he says uh i just remember he called her that he said i've never done this but i'm gonna do this he said the holy spirit told me this will you pray for me i go what is he doing so we go down off the stage and me and augustine and she lays hands on us on the two of us and this little five foot, 80, 90 pound little thing, she goes, I'm telling you, this 70, 80 year old woman, she started praying in tongues. Oh my goodness. I mean, Corey Russell would have been embarrassed. I'm talking about, no, I'm, no, I'm serious. She, she had a volume and an authority. I went, whoa, what is this? I go, sit to myself. She's done this before. <laughs> And it, it was anointed. She had authority in it. And she began to, she broke out. Diane, you were there. Remember this, this little gal down there? And, and uh, she started, rah, 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 I mean, really going hard in tongues for a couple minutes. I mean, when it was like scary, kind of, you know, it was like, wow, this is, this is real. And then she uh, started prophesying. She goes, and I would give you the word of the Lord. I would speak the word of the Lord to you. And she looks at Bob Jones. The Lord has made you a prophet with understanding to the nation of Israel. And I thought, boy, that's the truth. He has profound understanding. He goes, he has communicated from his counsels about Israel to you directly. And I thought, that's true. That's true. And because uh, now I'm, I I'm remember paying attention that Bob saw her and whispered to me before Augustine called out. So I know there's a little bit of a divine setup going on here. I don't have any idea to what degree. And so then... She begins to prophesy to me and Augustine. She's really focusing on Augustine, but it ends up, the prophecy is about me, though she's looking at him, talking to him. It all ends up, it's about this blueprint prophecy at the end. And so uh, she says, young man, you are clearly a prophet of the Lord. Well, that was obvious. He called out so many people, and it was such accuracy. And, and uh, she says, you have never seen, never have you seen. She says, no, you have seen good angels, and you have seen bad angels, demons, with your eyes. He was shaking his head, and I knew that he had. She said, but you have never seen an angel and a demon together in one experience. Never, says the Lord. And Augustine shook his head. He goes, never. And I found that was just an interesting word. She says, but immediately, 
immediately you are going to see the two come together. They will have conflict together and it will be manifest in the flesh undeniably. And the conflict they have will have proportions and meanings beyond anything you can comprehend. Thus says the Lord, it's going to happen. And uh, this lady says all this and, uh, well, so I, we get in the car, we drive home. I go, Augustine, have you ever had an angel demon in one dream? He goes, I mean, one experience. He goes, I've seen an angel two or three times and I've seen a demon two or three times, but never together. No. Wow. I said, what do you think about that? He goes, well, what do you think about it? I go, well, it certainly felt anointed. I mean, that guy was scary kind of. So we're driving home. We're driving home. And uh, what happens? I said, Augustine, is this, has this ever happened to you? Has this ever happened to you? And he goes, no. And I said, what do you think it means? He goes, I don't know, but I know it's real. And I said, I know it's real too because Bob Jones was calling her out before you did. And, and it was a divine setup. And Bob says, I knew it. So a couple of uh, nights later through this very, very unusual circumstances, a messed up car and a messed up this and that and the other, me and Augustine end up in a guy's house the same, the same night in a house, which it just would never have happened. But it's because of a car messed up and this and that. And, uh, so we go to bed and everything's fine. And, uh, just on the driving home from Tulsa, cause I'd never shared this word with Augustine. I said, Lord, if this word is of the level that I believe it is, you tell them and they will tell me. I won't even tell them it exists. And it was kept in real private, uh, I just wouldn't, I mean, just the smallest numbers of our leaders have seen this. I've shared it a few times with four, five, six of us over the years. And so, uh, Augustine, we're driving home from Tulsa, the Spirit's on him, he's prophesying, and he prophesies a number of key elements from this blueprint prophecy. I mean, specific, word for word. So I said, okay, Augustine, I said, I've been holding out on you. This is September uh, 13th or the day before, or no, it's actually September 13th or, or whatever. And uh, I said, I've been holding out on you. I said, I received a prophecy and I told him about it. And so we go, uh, we're in this guy's house and in the, in, the, in the weird situation, we're stuck in the house. And we're going to go to St. Louis the next day. It's really inconvenient. We go to bed. So now it's midnight. And he's really touched by this prophecy. So we go to bed. And what happens this night? I'm going to give the broadest strokes uh, uh, of this. Uh, uh, not the details because it's complicated. The story is. It's fascinating. And I'll tell it some other time. A Kind of a fireside chat night. But, uh, you know, when it's freezing and, this, and the weather is real bad and everybody stays home when only 18 of you showed up, that's the kind of night we'll just say, let's just tell that one story. It'll take a half hour to an hour. And it's an incredibly fascinating story, what happened that night. But uh, basically, an angel and a demon visited me and Augustine together. I've never had an experience with another person in the same room at the same time, and it happened. This demon comes up and strikes me on the right knee in so in such a fierce blow. My knee swells up. I begin to sweat in pain. It, it is, it, I mean, this demon strikes me in the leg. Just like that lady said, you're going to see a conflict between an angel and a demon. And it will manifest in the flesh. It manifests in my flesh. <laughs> but I heard this two or three days ago. And I'm going... This is like so intense. I've never had anything like this before. It's so bad that I, I cancel a meeting. I am in agonizing pain. But anyway, it happened. And my knee is in pain for 30 days, but really bad for, for those, uh, you know, 12, 18 hours, whatever. And then a five, six, 10 hours a day for 30 days. It would come and go. It would go instantly be gone and instantly be agonizing and instantly be gone. And I told Bob, I go, Jones, what is this? He goes, oh, I've had that happen once or twice. And he explained it. And uh, I said, odd. Okay, now, but here's what the angel says. Here's what the angel says. The angel uh, in this experience says this. says, there is going to be great adversity that's going to come against you that's going to even be noised abroad in the whole world. This is August 1984. And the angel spoke this specifically, the timing of it, and gave uh, uh, some of the people involved with incredible detail. And I said, this can't be true. And the reason the angel said this was not so we would know when it happened, it would happen. The reason the angel gave uh, information of people involved specific and exact timing, exact timing, which was many years later, exactly said it so much so that the month before everything began to break out, Noel Alexander, six, seven years later, said, well, 
If that visitation was from the Lord, next month is going to be one really intense month. And I told you six or seven books were written, and it all happened the next month. And, and Noel said, that's intense. How did you know that six or seven years ago? It would happen right now. I said, it was clear. It was direct from an angel. Exact information. But it really, the information was not so much about that time. It was about this prophecy. Because the Lord's wisdom was, if I'm going to give you that kind of detailed information, your legs swelled up. The lady a couple days ago told you in Tulsa it was going to happen. Uh, the exact details took place six, seven years later exactly to the, I mean, it was precise to where our leadership team watched it. And it was so precise. It was frightening at the precision of it. I said, this is holy to the Lord. And so the angel says then in this experience, he, the angel says, the prophecy, the blueprint prophecy, it says it has much light. How do I have it written here exactly? It, it contains much truth and great light. The angel actually said that phrase. It has much truth and great light. It says this directly. And so my knee swelled up. The lady a couple of days ago, the conflict of good and evil happened. It manifested in the flesh. Uh, six, seven years later, exact fulfillment. And, and it says, however, my servant who gave it, and the angel gave three negative descriptions. I mean, very clear. A, B, C. A, B, C. I wrote it all down because I remember it so vividly right now. I don't know how you could forget it. I mean, it just is imprinted in my mind. And it wasn't until 1989, this is 84, 89, five years later, Noel Alexander goes on a four-hour track into central Kansas, digs up this guy, and uh, came back and says, did you ever know Bob Jones? He goes, never heard of the guy. And he says, uh, what, what were you thinking? He goes, you know, the truth is, he says, I don't even think I like that church. I mean, he was just kind of a, a, a cranky old guy out all by himself. And, uh, and, and Noel was just startled. He said, I don't even know if I even like him anymore. And he says, what do you know about him? He goes, well, nothing, but I don't even know him. And so he went, he, and uh, Noel said it was the oddest two hours he ever had in his life. And uh, the three things, which I don't want to go into, they were negative. Bob Jones said, they are exactly accurate. He goes, oh, my goodness, you couldn't have said it more clearer than these exact three things. And so uh, I said, oh, I said, I'm sure of that, that I'm sure of. And, and that was in 89. And then afterwards, the other things happened. But the angel said, and, and I heard the words. I actually heard the words. It says that there's much truth and great light, much truth and great light. And uh, again, the details, I'm happy to tell all the details at another time. And uh, but I was convinced of this, absolutely convinced of this. Then uh, number four on June 23rd. June 23rd in 92, I never told Paul Cain anything about this. And I've been close to him, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. The, only a few guys behind the scenes knew this. And Paul Cain came and he gave me, just like Augustine, a number of the phrases directly out of this prophecy. And I said, Paul, I've been waiting for five years for you to do this. But I shared the prophecy and he called me the next day because he was, I was taking him to the airport when he told me all this. And he said, Mike, this is the word of the Lord. He goes, this is the true word of the Lord. He goes, Okay, number eight, it's November 7th, the Jubilee, the 50 days is over today. The dream happened on Monday, November 4th, on the 47th day. Isaiah, it was the Isaiah 66 verse 2 that we did this. And I called the people to tremble. And uh, Deborah comes up and says this, and, and she says, and in that dream 18 months ago, you said we're going to the north, south, east, and west. And, of course, I haven't even told her that until this second. It's the first time she's hearing it. We are going to the north, south, east, and west in IHOP, but in the Midwest. In our, I have a clear divine strategy. Uh, I don't mean all the details, but I have real clarity from God about this. And then, and then in this dream 18 months ago, it says, and when this fast takes place, the Isaiah 62 takes place, when it's time to go to the north, south, east, and west, it is time to share the blueprint prophecy. And I says, man, I'm on this fast by accident. I didn't even plan. And uh, <laughs> let's turn to it. Let's turn to it and look at this now. How much time do we have, Don? Okay, five minutes. Good. Okay. No, that's okay. I'm just, we can, <clears throat> we'll go a minute or two beyond, but I, I don't, you gotta, it isn't the reading of it. It's the, I mean, the me reading, it's the giving of it. It's the going on the line. It's the burning the bridge. It's 18 years. This thing has been 
under lock and key for 18 years. Here's how it starts. Oh, oh by the way, this is edited. This is edited. And what I mean by edited, uh, maybe uh, uh, a half a page is gone. And, uh, and the editing isn't to be mysterious. It's because I, in, in no way did the editing enhance what is here. I wrote that on the last page there. The editing actually diminishes it slightly. There's a few things not in here. I just don't feel like it's helpful because of the strength of those few things are so intense that, uh, I, I mean, in the scope of, of, of impact, I just don't feel it's helpful to have them in there. So I, I took a few things out. And uh, the reason I'm saying that isn't, uh, it's not, uh, uh, I'm trying to be mysterious again. In the days to come, 5, 10, 15 years, there will be an hour to bring it out unedited. I've waited 18 years. Uh, this thing is so holy. It is so special to me. I don't mean any words infallible given by a man in this regard outside the Scripture. But, I mean, this is a... God ha- went to a, uh, God went to, and I, you're not out of his way. How do you say this? God went, God emphasized this truth. This scripture is real. I mean, this, uh, not the scripture, this prophecy is, uh, real. He, he emphasized it in these ways that I've, uh, just shared with you here and a few others as well, but I don't have time for. But it starts off, God shall confirm in your spirit, do not proceed until he does. Well, God confirmed in my spirit November 4th on the 47th day when Isaiah 62, 6, I called our stuff to, tri- uh, to trembling. We were in a spirit of dedication. I said, this is our dedication service. And I remember even saying, I go, I wonder why you were there. I said, I wonder why we're not doing this on the 50th day. Because I would think this would be on the 50th day. And the reason is because the Lord wanted this confirmed so I could get it ready for the 50th day to share. That's really why. As I'm sitting here, I go, oh, standing here tonight, I'm going, that's why the Lord wanted to confirm it. That dream, I was, I'm so sure we're now beginning through the transition, the birth canal of a new season, and we're going to begin in this. It says, upon the confirmation, act immediately. Act immediately. Next paragraph. I'm skipping some. There will be another on the north, the south, the east, and the west. This is what I said in Deborah's dream 18 months ago. This is what I... Uh, have said to just two or three people, leaders behind the scenes that no one even knows. They said, we're going to north, south, east, and west. It's not just north, south, east, and west of Kansas City. It's in the Midwest. Where the, anyway, there's a lot to say about that. Okay. Next paragraph. In days past, the Lord said, you are a garden center of my choice. And, and I'm, I'm taking a, a few little phrases that I feel like this... Uh, uh, Anyway, you, you can just follow along there. He says, I'm going to raise up plants of renown. It shall be known and my ways shall be renowned. God's going to raise up not just young people, but mostly young people. And they will be renowned in their revelation and understanding. Renowned meaning known even around the world, even in their youth. I will bring and I will place leaders in their place. And the I will bring almost everybody, not everybody. But most of you in this room, God brought you from another location. You were brought by the Lord sovereignly. And the majority will come from other places, just like 90% of you in this room were not in Kansas City, except for you came for the purpose of God. You were brought and you were placed. And that's a real powerful word to me. And uh, goes on the next one. It says, even, the next paragraph, even out of it, and I'm skipping a lot for those that are... Uh, uh, listening to this by tape, but but we're going to make this available. I'm going to go widespread with this. I'm going to publish it on the internet. I'm going to make a book out of it. I'm going all the way with this. I'm going to, by the word of my testimony, I'm not backing her down. My point isn't, I'm going to ask people to believe this. That's not the point. My point being is all the things I've shared for 12 nights are only seeds. And all the things I've shared for 12 nights, and I'm just making this, I'm not saying this specifically, could be a book every night is a book in its own. And I'm going to begin to give myself to writing, publishing. I'm going to proclaim this set stuff to the ends of the earth. And I'm not looking back, and I'm taking you guys with me. <laughs> and that's, that's a, a, a warning and a promise. Okay. And, uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is really important because it's time to go. And this is going to disturb all kinds of things and bless all kinds of things. Angels and demons are going to collide again. And the uh, experience that the Lord used to confirm this word is the very kind of collision that's going to come when this word starts going forth. There will be clashes of angels and demons in manifestation in the flesh. 
That was the word that God used. And an angel, an angel visited and said, this word was from the Lord. In essence, much truth in great light was the word and described the man that gave it in three ways that were not flattering. And, uh, and they found exactly true in exactly the precision of the people and the dates of all the negative that happened six and seven years later. Exactly. Again, I just want to say this. Noah Alexander said the month before everything got negative, he says, well, if that word is real from that angel, it starts next month. And it started next month. Exactly. And he went, man, that was intense. He goes, how did you know that? Of course, he knew. I mean, we were just talking. He knew it was an angel who said it. It was that kind of clarity. I have no doubt about this. And so I'm not going to in any, I'm a tremble. See, you know why it's trembled the word? The, the way we would not tremble this word is by reducing it. I am not reducing this to make some guy happy. I'm trembling. This is God's word. It's finished. Let it land where it lands. I'm not going to be more humble than God. I'm not going to reduce it. And when I do my human weakness thing, I'm not backing off. I'm taking grace and I'm moving forward. I'm going to esteem his word and his strength and his dedication superior to mine. It's, it's going to be done. That's all there is to it. We're just doing it. And so there, there you have it. Okay, even out of the loins of the bloodline of the flesh of Abraham, that's the Jewish nation. I said there would be many seeds, many nations, kindreds and tongues. I will raise, I will raise up and there shall flow many sons and daughters. They shall be known. They shall be renowned. Even around the world is the idea. Even as the children of the renowned, they shall be. These children shall flow out of my spirit. They shall be chil- spiritual children. They will inhabit the uttermost parts of the earth. They will go to the out of places, it says later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Next paragraph. You shall set in order. In other words, I'll give you prophetic clarity is the next paragraph. The whole paragraph after that. Upon acting upon this, I will uh, confirm it powerful, the oil of God. And there's uh, a lot of things to say about that phrase, but we're going to move on. They shall flow from the north, the south. They shall come and be dandled, or that's the Lord fondly. Uh, the Lord uh, gently uh, nurturing in his kindness, his people. And uh, uh, that verse actually is in Isaiah 66, and it just strikes me. I believe it's verse 12 or 13. Uh, that is, that's amazing, because that was Deborah's uh, other part of the dream. Huh? It just strikes me this second. Wow. She told me that just today. Uh, okay, wow. That's pretty cool. And uh, wow, that is cool. <laughs> No, because, anyway, that's cool. <laughs> because this is the, uh, the concept. Remember on the, uh, about, on, about day 30, we had a Native uh, uh, American, uh, one of the primary leaders in the prayer movement, from a Native American, and uh, I think Cherokee tribe. And uh, Deborah was up front praying in tongues, and he came up to me afterwards, and he said, he came to me afterwards and he said, that girl up there, and he pointed to her, she prayed in my native tongue. And this was the verse she prayed. It just strikes me right now. I just said, put this together. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this was the idea. It was these two verses together. He says, she prayed this and this. And Deborah told me the day before the meeting, I said, that's really neat. It's Isaiah 66. It's not verse 2, but it's Isaiah 66. And I just, wow. Okay. Uh, that was just for me. Okay, uh, next page. Oh, I like the top paragraph. Their responsibility lies within me. In other words, having oil in our lamps. I mentioned that last night. Their safety is in being close together in wholesome, mature relationships. Uh, it goes on, uh, uh, two paragra- third paragraph, I will be your purse bearer. It says in the middle of this that I'm going to do this and that before the cities become desolate. Now, that's a very interesting statement with a lot of implications. It goes on to the next one. The load will be too heavy. I'm sending men and women, and they're going to have authority, and they're going to be holy, and they're going to be committed to me. Uh, It goes on to the last one. I will be your purse bearer. I will give the power to make wealth. This will be a uh, forerunner-type ministry. Go to the next page, page three. Of course, I'm skipping most everything. Third uh, paragraph. This is why I taught on this the other day, and this is why we got to be bold about it, because we got to get people ready. It says, uh, I will bring them up into, no, that's not the one. It's one, two, three, four, five paragraphs down. I'm going to take people up in the spirit, catch them away in the spirit. 
It will not be commonplace, these heavenly experiences, but it will happen, I mean, commonplace to where people have them every other day and it's trite and it becomes uh, just something that humans take for granted, but it will happen instead of uh, significantly more, though it will still be rare and stunning and holy. God is going to begin to catch people up and talk to them like in the days of old. He goes on at the very end. He says, if they're stubborn and they're obstinate and rebellious, not weak, not immature, and not a little bit emotional. That's not what it's talking about. We're all weak. We're all immature. We all get a little emotional. We all get in a bad mood at the worst time, and they're like, oh, gee, I guess I'm out now. No, you're not out. You're not out. Everybody gets in a bad mood at the worst time. Okay. That's different than a persistent rebellion against God. Okay, but I like that phrase in, in black uh, bold there. This is the day of my visitation. The way Bob told me on, on Friday, it's going to happen on Monday. For some reason, as it was important to the Lord, and here it was on that Monday, March 26th, it was somehow it's important. Last page. Again, I'm skipping almost all of it. For those that are here in the tape, we've got about one minute to go. The third paragraph, all of this flows out of the house of prayer. This is 84. This is in 84. He says, it's all going to flow out of the house of prayer. Uh, where's the one I really love about the, uh, uh, the out-of-the-way places? Oh, I love that one. Somewhere it says they're going to go to... Oh, yeah, that's the one. Let's go to the second paragraph to the last. Here's my real favorite one. The second paragraph to the last is truly my favorite. For I place in your hands the final decision. It, it, this is true of every individual. Faith is by my grace. Here's the part I like. In my grace is my tolerance and my contingency for human weakness, for flesh. I go, oh, that's my very favorite one. And then the last one, it says that uh, these servants are going to go, they're going to be servants. They're not going to be uh, show horses. They're going to be work horses. They're going to go to the out-of-the-way places. They're not going to just go to the big places so that they get all the, the lights and the da da They're going to go to the out-of-the-way places as servants. Oh, I love that. Amen. Let's stand. This concludes this tape presentation from Friends of the Bridegroom. For more information on resources available from Mike Bickle, as well as news about upcoming conferences and live broadcasts, visit our website at www.fotb.com. Thank you.